Americans today have become dependent on unemployment checks, food stamps, and other government handouts that have not only guaranteed that we will soon experience hyperinflation, but they have the unintended consequence of making any future economic recovery absolutely impossible. Many Americans are no longer motivated to find work and become productive members of society. Some Americans are outright abusing the system that hardworking productive Americans are forced to support. One NIA member owns the most popular bakery in the Georgetown neighborhood of Washington, D.C. A customer recently entered his store and asked for them to produce a custom-made birthday cake that looks exactly like her very high-end designer handbag. After saying that producing the cake would be no problem and that the price would be $150, the customer said that she would like to place the order and asked if the bakery would accept food stamps as payment. Instead of working as hard as possible to live the best lives as possible, most Americans are satisfied with their unemployment checks and food stamps. They spend their time worrying about the personal lives of others by watching reality shows, reading TMZ, and gossiping about their favorite musicians and sports heroes. This is reminiscent of how during the U.S. Great Depression, Americans became obsessed with going to the movies as it offered them a chance to escape the heat, the cold, and the loneliness of their bleak personal lives. With America's obsession with Hollywood now reaching epidemic proportions, it's a sure sign that a societal collapse will soon occur. NIA has direct knowledge of many Americans who are living in Section 8 housing while receiving unemployment checks and food stamps, but are making absolutely no attempt to find a job. Some of them have had offers to work for $15 to $20 per hour, but they turn these employment opportunities down out of fear that they may lose their housing, food, and other entitlements. The 40-year-old friend of one NIA member who was living off of government entitlements in California recently said that he will come out of retirement for $25 per hour. Anything less wouldn't be worth it. President Obama just signed a $26 billion bailout for cash-strapped states in which $10 billion are going to protect 160,000 teachers' jobs. NIA believes that these funds will do nothing to help education in America and that the entire U.S. education system needs a total overhaul. The system now is built where only those that know how to think like they do, become members of the corporation, be chained to one kind of thinking, then school is great for you. If you could regurgitate, repeat, suck up brown nose, and do everything they tell you to do, you will be a success in school, and who knows, someday you could even become a middle manager in some corporation with two weeks vacation pay. The school system stinks. NIA has been researching our nation's school districts, trying to see if any of them have come up with any brilliant ideas on how to improve our nation's schools. As smart as our nation's school board members claim to be, it appears as though almost none of them have come up with any ideas other than to beg their state and federal governments for more funds. The most radical idea we have heard is what was just approved in Mount Olive, New Jersey. They will no longer give out any D's. And that means that any middle school or high school student earning anything less than a 70 or a C will actually get an F. What do you have against D's? Well, I, I don't personally have anything against these other than it's unacceptable. NIA has spoken to hundreds of school teachers across America, and one thing has been made very clear. If more than 10% of a class fails, teachers are put on an improvement plan, and in order to avoid this, teachers are artificially manipulating the grades of students to make sure there is never more than a 10% failure rate. So explain to us how it works, because we understand that in your school district, 384 students a month ago in June ended the school year with a D as a final grade. What happens to those 384 students come September? NIA guarantees that the overwhelming majority of those students will receive a C next year, not because they studied harder, but because teachers manipulated the grades in order for them to look good. Fox News exposes this scheme as grade inflation which was probably the most Fox has done all year to warn Americans about the dangers of inflation. This causes the school board president to literally become speechless.
Do you fear that you will see grade inflation from teachers so that they don't get in trouble for having to give somebody a less than a C? Will they then give everybody a C so that they're not in trouble with you? One, I don't believe so because I believe in the integrity of the system that approving. <laughs> they, they keep faking the scores so it makes it look like the kids are doing better so they keep getting federal aid and those teachers get bonuses. So they cook the books even at that level. Students today are taught in high school about the need to get deeply into debt to attend college for a degree that is worthless because everyone else has one. With U.S. youth unemployment today at a record high, we should be teaching high school students the essential skills needed to start their own businesses immediately after graduating high school. Instead of spending $100,000 to support the lifestyles of professors and administrators who failed in the real world, students should be investing that money to start their own business. Unfortunately, students today are completely dependent on finding non-existent jobs and don't have the knowledge or motivation to go out and create employment on their own. Privately run-for-profit colleges like DeVry University are outright scams that are taking advantage of high unemployment in the U.S. today along with the government's willingness to give out easy student loans. When I walked into this place, I said, I will graduate with honors, and I did. And they got jobs like that. I mean, the next day. I work in operations. Software engineering. Accounting clerk. I just got a job as a web designer. Um, really good job. It's actually kind of like my dream job. DeVry claims to have a job placement rate of 90% within six months after earning a degree. Yet only 38% of those who took out student loans to attend DeVry are repaying their loans on time. Students in these phony universities openly cheat on their exams right in front of their so-called professors. Not only is a degree from DeVry or any comparable school completely worthless, but NIA believes they are worse than worthless. If you apply for a job and show them your degree from DeVry, it is likely they will completely avoid you for being stupid enough to have gone there. Disturbingly, the U.S. government is now providing foreign aid to subsidize the creation of overseas jobs in South Asia that are replacing jobs that would have been in the U.S. The United States Agency for International Development has launched a $36 million program to train 3,000 IT specialists in South Asia. Following their training, these workers will be placed with outsourcing vendors in the region that provides services to American companies looking to take advantage of Asia's low labor costs. Government employees today make more money than private sector workers in 83% of all comparable occupations, with average hourly pay being 20 to 40% higher than wages in the private sector. Once you include health insurance and other benefits, the average federal government worker received $123,049 in total compensation in 2009 compared to the average private sector worker's total compensation of $61,051. Some local and state governments also pay outrageous wages. Robert Rizzo was being paid a total of $1.5 million in annual compensation as the city manager of Bell, California, a small town with a population of 36,000 people. The assistant city manager in that same town was being paid $845,000 per year, with the police chief being paid $770,000 per year. All three of them were promised pensions when they retire for the majority of their salaries. Two LA Times reporters uncovered these outrageous salaries when they were investigating another matter in a neighboring town. After it was made public, residents of Bell, California literally marched to City Hall and forced these three to resign from their positions. Just disgusting what they're doing with our money. It's all going into their pockets. I have lived in this city for 38 years. I have never seen before this kind of behavior from the city government. They're serving the people. They're not, make, they're not supposed to be making money out of us. NIA believes the most disturbing part about Bell, California is not what these government employees pay themselves, but how no city residents took enough interest in their local government to discover this until the media uncovered it years later. Bell, California just saw its debt rating downgraded to junk and will likely soon default on its debt all because residents of the city were simply too preoccupied to care.
What's taking place in Bell, California is just a microcosm of what's taking place in our federal government today. First Lady Michelle Obama recently went on vacation in Spain on the taxpayer's dime. Our country is broke, yet we were forced to spend $241,000 for the cost of round-trip transportation, hotel rooms, and 70 security personnel. How out of touch could Obama administration be that they put on a spectacle of a vacation like that at a time when people can't pay their mortgages, when a time when people are losing their jobs, when a time that unemployment keeps going up, they're out of touch. They are the royalty, the elite, just like the stars in Hollywood. It's show business for ugly people in Washington. It's star power. They have no idea how the average person lives or feels because of the way they're treated. The U.S. Treasury is so pathetic that they are now even accepting online donations just to try to pay down the debt. The U.S. has no way of paying back its $13.4 trillion national debt and $81 trillion in total obligations. Yet there is still no widespread outrage in this country about deficit spending. Politicians continue to promise more giveaways and lower taxes, and Americans fall for it because they are unaware of the hyperinflation that awaits. Americans continuously get brainwashed by the mainstream media to elect both Democrats and neocon Republicans, who do nothing other than rapidly increase the size of government. When I was a kid, growing up during the Cold War, I used to hear about the communists in power, the party, the party, yeah. The party's still in power. But instead of having one name, communist, they have two names, Republican, Democrat. It's one party. Party members, party heads, party whips. The party, the party. They're having a party and you're paying for it. Right now, there are candidates debating about the Constitution of this country. In fact, some of these candidates are holding up the Constitution and saying how they're going to restore it. Yet the next sentence out of their mouth is how they're going to reform an entitlement program or how they're going to take money from a group of people to offer a tax deduction to another group of people. Redistribution of wealth is not in the Constitution and neither is a democracy. The Founding Fathers set up a republic so that we did not have mob rule, so that we could not vote each other gifts. Because they knew that if you continue to re-elect politicians that promised you more of other people's money, we would eventually destroy this nation. In order for Obama to reach his goal of lowering the U.S. budget deficit down to $752 billion in 2015, the White House is projecting an average GDP growth rate of 5.58% over the next five years. In the second quarter of 2010, U.S. GDP grew by only 1.6%. To get this dismal 1.6% growth rate, the U.S. government had to spend $3.7 trillion on bailouts, stimulus bills, the buying of mortgage-backed securities, and other commitments. The U.S. government bought GDP growth in 2009 by implementing its destructive cash for clunkers and home buyer tax rebate programs. Recently in Los Angeles, California, my friend had their car stolen. It was a 1994 Camry. And we were wondering, why would anybody want to steal this old vehicle? You know what the cops told them? That because of the cash for clunkers program, because of this supposedly government stimulus plan that was supposed to help our economy, thefts are up for older cars because the thieves need the parts. Parts are in huge demand for older vehicles because the government literally destroyed a working asset and sent it off to China. The U.S. is so desperate to generate revenue now that they are taking advantage of America's concerns about inflation by selling forever stamps. Stamp prices have increased by 475% over the past 40 years. The U.S. Postal Service claims that if you go to the post office and purchase a...